Good morning. Oh, it's still cold. It's cold. Cold, cold, cold. I don't like it. I don't like it, I tell you. That's all right. Spring is coming. Yes, it the is. The days are getting longer. Yes. We're pretty happy about we're that. We're very happy. It's not dark that. when we go to the gym anymore, which is preferable. Right, right. exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. Um, how was your workout? My workout was good. I did um, back and calves today. Yeah. Had a good workout. Got done quick, which was good. Meant I wasn't doing too much talking. Yeah. And more working out, which That's is good. That's good. Yeah. So I'm very happy with it today. I did legs today. You did do legs today. Yes. I did 120 lunges. No, 160 lunges today. Nice. That's crazy. I'm, t- I'm That's tired crazy. just thinking about it. I, I'm, my legs are going to be sore tomorrow, yeah. which is cool. That's, That's cool. good. That's good. <laughs> Did you, have you noticed that you're not as sore as long? Yeah. You know? I'm, and I, there's a part of me, like psychologically, I feel like, oh, I'm not working hard enough. I should work harder. But yeah. it's because of our whole food plant right. based. Bodies and, recuperating faster. And fasting. We, work, we recuperate more quickly. Yeah, so. Sure. Usually I would be sore after doing legs for like three or four days. Now it's like one day and the next day I'm fine. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's good. Um, fasting day, obviously. Um, you're drinking. What are you drinking? Uh, turmeric tea. Oh, turmeric tea? Okay. Yes. And I have uh, turmeric and ginger in mine. So tea for breakfast. Tea for breakfast today. It's fasting day for those who are joining us and don't know. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But we wanted to talk a little bit about the emotional and psychological aspects you have to play with the computer. I do. I like, I like <laughs> symmetry. The emotional and psychological aspects of food. And not just personally, because obviously there's a whole personal aspect to it. But as a whole, as a collective, culturally... And, and why it's so hard for us to choose foods that we know are good for us. It's okay. Don't fuss with it. Sweetie. Keep talking, baby. Keep uh, talking. I don't like it when you're not engaged with me, though. I will be certainly. Okay. So. Okay. Why is it hard to choose foods that are good for us? And I know we've talked about how you and I don't really care too much what people think. Right. But I've seen on a lot of the forums that I'm in, um, there's a lot of question about how do I not look weird when I go out to restaurants? How do I deal with people being judgy about what I eat? And have you experienced people being judgy? Well, no, but then again, I'm not always the most uh, aware of what's going on around me sometimes. Uh, But I do think that that the biggest issue is people feel that ordering healthy is difficult, where they feel like eating unhealthy food is what people want to serve you is a lot easier to do. It's just, it's like, Going with the flow. It's not being the oddball in the crowd. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think that. But the thing is, you know, we can be as healthy as we choose to be. Hi, Sean. It's good to see you. I haven't hey, seen Sean. you in a while. Um, but you have to, you have to choose to be healthy. And I think in, a, in America, the default is to just eat whatever's easy. Right. And what's easy is junk. And processed foods. Mm-hmm. Open it up and eat it. Yeah. Right. And so then the question you have to kind of ask yourself is why are you choosing the foods that you're choosing? Right. Um, are you choosing them because that's what you have in the house? Okay. Well, the easy thing to do then is to de- get other things in the house. And that's what we did yes. when we first started this is we yeah. became really conscientious about getting healthier options in the house to eat. And now yeah. there's nothing in the house. There's no junk to eat. So, have, if, you yeah. know, if you have a sweet tooth, you grab a fig. That's right. We had to do a pantry revamp. We did. Right. I we, mean, that's we what did it comes a revamp, down to. Yeah. And, you know, they, they say if, if something doesn't spoil, it's not food. Right. Not too long ago, I was going through the pantry, and in the back of the pantry, I found – I actually they're yeah, sitting right here. right there, yeah. I was going to show them to you guys. Before we threw them out. I found these, and I think I moved these from New Jersey, and we moved from New Jersey three and a half years ago. Right. And they are still fine. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's a little bit scary that they're still – Right, Fine. ready to go. They don't spoil. Not food. Not food. So we'll be throwing those away. Yes. But those are the kind of things you have to look for in your in your pantry is do you have food that's not food that you're eating? Right, right, so exactly. That That's always a, a challenge. So think about why are you choosing what you're choosing mm-hmm. and what options do you have to make those choices easier. And then I know as a psychologist, the shame around food right. is real. And, and that's the that's the one part that I've never had. And I think it's because when I used to be a bodybuilder, I always had to order differently. When I went out to eat, I always had to order differently. So it became a natural thing for me. Right. But that is the number one complaint I hear from people, too, is they don't want to be the person at the dinner table at a restaurant that's like, well, can you do this? And can you do that? And can you do this? And can you do that? And then they feel like everybody's staring at them and everybody's judging them. 
Right. And what do I mean? What are they judging for? Oh man, they're just healthy. Look at those people. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh no. Exactly. Healthy. Terrible. You know? Exactly. I think too, though, that um, you know, we've talked about people eating in their car, and that's because they know the food that they're eating isn't the best that they could choose, but they want to eat it anyway. And mm -hmm. that there's an addiction there, which right. we've talked about how um, fast food definitely is set up to addict us. And then there's shame around eating that kind of thing. Right. But I think the other thing, and I saw that this is what brought this up for me today, is yesterday on Facebook there was a, a, a feed, somebody said something about having a bad day, and someone posted on it a comment that said, you need a quart of ice cream stat. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking, why do yeah. we do that? What is it yeah. about us culturally that says, if we're unhappy, eat bad food, eat junk, <laughs> eat stuff that's terrible yes. for you. Now, obviously, we've talked about the difference between happiness and pleasure and how food that's junk does bring us pleasure. It does um, activate our dopamine systems, which is right. pleasure, not happiness, which are very different. And so I think that that's part of it. But we also, there's so many people who, as children, were rewarded with food. And right. I see that, yeah. too. Like, I, I saw a post recently, and I'm, I'm not... This is not a judgmental statement. This is just a factual statement. I saw a post recently where um, a woman took a picture of her daughter eating. They were McNuggets, and I don't know which chain they were from. You know, maybe they were just regular chicken nuggets, but right. they were chicken fried little dippy things. And she commented on it that her daughter had succeeded at something, done something, and this was her reward. Is they she took her to this fast food place for lunch with, and there were fries and you know yeah. whatever. Yeah. And that's a learned behavior. And what you're doing is you're teaching that child that this is the type of food that we should be eating. This well, is, this and is the food is reward. Food. Yes, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I, you know, it just as you know, songs tend to pop into my head randomly. And for people old enough to uh, be Pink Floyd fans, I think about the line in the one song that says, you can't have your pudding. How can you have your pudding if you don't eat your meat? You must eat your meat. <laughs> no. So I'm thinking, eat the bad meat, and then I'll give you the bad pudding as a reward. <laughs> and so the song has like the, the end of that part of the song has a new meaning to me now. It's it's bizarre. Right? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The other thing too is that I think we're so busy um, with our lives and everything we have going on that we don't listen to our inner voice. We don't listen to that part of our brain that says you know, hey, I should eat food that's good for me. I should make better choices. And we right. just we think about food as something we just grab and run. Right. Yeah. And I, I think that's a mistake. We need to start being more aware of, of what we're eating and, and really thinking about it and right. making those choices consciously, which is kind of what we're trying to help with here is to give you guys some data so that you can make conscious choices that are healthier and that make sense, even if you don't decide to go completely whole food right. plant-based right. like we have. Right. And I was just thinking how funny it is because I don't know whether it was a documentary or a book where we talked about people eating in the car mm -hmm. and like that's not real food and all that. And like since we saw that, how often we actually see people mm -hmm. eating in their car. I mean, it's just, right. it's just, it's like, you know, I don't know. It's, it's well, and, and as a coach, I guess the, the question that I would ask is what would your life look like if you were healthier? You know, if you chose healthier foods and that led to more energy better health, less yeah. sickness, mm -hmm. what would that look like for you? And and is that a positive and is it a positive for your family? Right. So and that would be a conversation that, you know, I would I would have with a client is what does it look like if you if you cho chose to do this? Right. So I think that that's important as well. Yeah. It could be a general it could be a good general co um, conversation in the community section too mm -hmm. on the website once it's going. Right, and I can yeah. add that question. Yeah. And, you know, if, if you can create the life you want, which so many of us, I know there's a lot of, um, I have a lot of entrepreneurs who join this feed. So many of us are interested in creating the life that we want. And I think it starts with the food you put in your mouth yeah. because that's, that's where you're going to get your energy and your ability to, to focus and your mental clarity. So I think that that's important. And, you know, you, people say, well, what do I eat? 80% of what you eat should be starch. Right. And I know that goes, I've been talking about starch for days and because that goes against everything we hear. I, you were just talking to somebody the other day. And, and everybody always brings up, you eat carbs or they want that no carb or low carb diet. And I mean, everything we've found and you've researched and we've seen in documentaries and what I've been reading. In, and in, in my how, nutrition classes. On that the diet and all that is that we need starch and it should be 80% of your diet. And the concept of limiting or, or taking away your starch is so unhealthy and so dangerous yeah you know um and i hate to use something that i remember from the past but i do remember back when i was buying that and we talked about carbs back then, that the carbs are a vital nutrient 
for the brain. Mm -hmm, they are. And so if you're going to take carbs away, what are you saying as far as your brain function goes and the future of your brain and things like Alzheimer's and dementia and all these other things that are going to come up because you've basically cheated your brain for how many years? Right. You know? And when we talk about starch, I'm not talking about, you know, grab a donut. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what Although I'm technically about. starch. It is, but no, that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real whole foods that are starches, right. which are, you know, your legumes, your beans, your potatoes, your rices, your yams, even uh, pasta. pasta. Pasta counts. It's whole a little grain more bread. processed, but that yeah. counts. So, you know, the, the premise is you have to be able to have foods that are good for you available. And if you eat in your car, have those foods in your car. Right. If you eat at your desk, have those foods mm -hmm. in your desk. Because wherever you eat, that's where it's going to be. I was talking to somebody the other day who said her daughter was doing really, really well until she started school this year. Mm. And the teacher has a snack pantry. Yeah. And it's straight junk. It's yeah. packaged, processed, not food. That the kids purchase from her. That which, the kids which just, just yeah. blows my mind away. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, it just blows my mind away. So her daughter's having yeah. trouble now being healthy. Yeah. Sorry, I got yeah. ginger in my mouth. Ooh, can't um, have it. So 80% should be starch, and that, that'll help you definitely. But, you know, the more knowledge you gain, the less likely it is you'll ever need to diet again. Right. Because you'll start eating food that fuels your body the way it needs to be fueled and doesn't get stored. We talked yesterday about how starch doesn't get stored as fat. It gets stored as glycogen, which is then fuel. Right. That's easy to access. And then I go zipping around the gym every day. You do. It's true. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that going back to you have to really, you know, pay attention to yourself and understand what your body needs and what your brain wants your body to have. Right. I don't think we spend enough time thinking about, about it the way that we should. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I did find something, I wanted to share this with you, <clears throat> excuse me. Artificial sweeteners have such an intense flavor that they give your taste buds a really serious jolt. And when you jolt your taste buds, it basically dumps all of the neuron what do they call it? Neurotransmitters that it uses to communicate. And it's like, yay, that's amazing. But the problem with that is then you can't taste regular food anymore <laughs> because there's nothing there for it to be able to say, hey, I taste this. So that's something to consider when it talks about artificial, artificial sweeteners. sweeteners yeah. yeah. So I've been, uh, I've been learning about the class I'm in is about disease of affluence and they're talking a lot about cancer. I didn't want to bring that up today because I'm not done with it, but, um, I do want to have a conversation with you guys pretty soon about the disease of affluence and how overindulgence does. Yeah. It does create well, and, cancer. And, and we've said that in, in the Western society, um, we associate um, success and wealth mm -hmm. with eating out a lot and eating those types of rich foods. That are, well, we've even talked about how yeah. do we celebrate? What does it look like for yes, us to celebrate? Exactly. Because, you know, our anniversary is coming up and right. we used to go out to dinner to a nice restaurant and now we're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless we can find a, I mean, you know, I guess we could theoretically go into Philly or something and find a uh, vegan restaurant or something. Right. So yeah. Maybe that's what we do. You know? But. So that then that's yeah that's a challenge. Yeah. You know, how do you change the way you engage with people around food? Because food is such a huge part of the American culture, yeah. and making those decisions to be the weird one. Although I do think, and I've said this on my page over and over, I think we are moving more toward as a society whole yeah. food plant based because we're starting to get educated in the science that's been available for 50 years. We are starting to read it and we right. are starting to see it, even though. Big food has been hiding it from us. Well, and I think what's happening is, and I think it's starting with the older generation, and I think it's because the older generation is getting tired of, yes, living longer, but living terribly. Yeah. You know, living as a crippled or living as, a, you know, an, an invalid. What's the word? Invalid. Invalid. Thank you. Or, you know, or constant aches or, you know, no breath, can't walk up steps. I mean, all these things that, have, that we basically have mistreated our bodies all our lives yeah. are now coming back to bite us. So it's hard because we're taught that food is, is a reward right. and we like to reward ourselves and it feels good and it's easy and we don't like to think about food. So we don't think we just eat. Right. And so we, we have to start being, and I know this is a, a really big like word, but we have to be mindful of what we're eating. <laughs> so she says we, she thinks we could find a great vegan restaurant. Yeah. So. We yeah. can look. I mean, I'm sure there's some in Baltimore or D.C. We, yeah, we, gotta we, just have, we have it. not looked yet. We haven't we looked. We need to take a, need yeah. to see what we can find. But 
we have to start being more aware and making choices when we're at the grocery store of what we bring in the house right. and what we eat and doing it purposefully because you're never going to be healthy if you don't make the decision to be healthy because right. culture is going to make you sick and poor and medicine and craziness. Right. And the people that are eating badly want you to join them. Right. I mean, people it's like that, alcohol, people right. who drink want you yeah, to drink. Join them. I mean, they want it. People want, who eat junk want you to that, eat junk. That gives them the um, verification that what they're that doing okay. is okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've had people say, you make me feel bad. And I don't understand how is what I do have any impact on how they feel. Right. But it's because that they have some guilt around it that they haven't worked through. And I can get into that as a psychologist. Well, I see that Laura's throwing them. restaurants at us, so we'll have to We'll have stay. to look at them and yes, see. Yes, we'll have to go back and look at them. Go find them. <laughs> but I, I wanted to take a couple of minutes today and just talk about, I know it's hard. I get it. Excuse me, I'm choking on my tea. I get it that it's challenging to be different and that it's challenging to have to change the way you think. Because as humans, we like it easy. Yep. And this is easy once you actually get into it, but you have to get into it. Right. So I would encourage you to start making those choices to say, I want to be healthy. And we see people in the gym who I know they want to be healthy. They're in the yeah. gym. Yeah. And if they would just tweak their diet to add more plants, it would make such a huge difference. For That's them. it. Start small. And the next thing you know, you'll be, you know, where you'll we be are. like us. Right. Oh no. And it'll be like, Oh no. What happened? <laughs> So that that's my feedback for today. Right. Um, if you have something you a question, I did get some questions yesterday that I'm going to kind of put together and hopefully do, we'll do something about because there were different foods. Well, can I? What about this? What do you think about that? Right. So I'll do some research and get back to you guys on those questions. But, but let us know what you'd like us to talk about, what you'd like us to share, right. and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. That's it. And so with that, we will say, eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day. Have guys. a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.